Hello, and welcome back to our Squad Leader tutorial series. In our last video in the series, we talked about riders traveling on the back of tanks. Like we found out, it is fast, but not the safest way to get around. Passengers have it a little better than riders. In this video, we will talk about getting around in trucks. While trucks are not the ideal way to get into a battle, it beats walking. To start with, we will evaluate the truck counter and how it operates on the advanced squad leader battlefield. We will start with the German Opel Blitz truck. You notice that it looks different than the AVs that we saw in the past. The first thing you notice is the movement point value of 28. Now behind it, you will see two circles side by side. This is the emblem for vehicles that move like a truck. Next, you will see the two stars. This means that this vehicle is unarmored in the front, side, and rear. In the lower left corner, we see two sets of numbers. The T7 is the towing value of this truck. This number represents the towing ability of this truck. It can tow any gun with a manhandling number of seven or higher. The 21PP corresponds to the portage point capacity of this truck. It can carry 21 portage points. That goes back to our portage costs of 10 for a squad, five for a half squad or crew, and zero for less than five single man counters. We flip the truck over to the wreck side of the vehicle and we see a crew survival number of six. It is in small case letters as opposed to the large case letters seen on the tanks we saw in other videos. That is because this corresponds to survival of the passengers. There is no crew for this vehicle. So the truck got destroyed and there were no passengers on it at the time, there would be no crew survival role. Now that we know what everything means on the truck, let's put our Opal Blitz through its paces. To move the truck, we use the terrain movement cost seen on the chart under the truck column. We will compare the tracked vehicle with the truck movement. Using open ground as an example, a tracked vehicle only uses 1 MP, but a truck would use 4 MP. This movement rate would affect everything in open ground. Now, we will go through the most common movement rates of the truck. In this first example, we will start the truck for 1 MP. Next, we will go into the open ground at an expense of 4 MP for a total of 5 movement points. Now, we are going to bypass the house. For a vehicle to use bypass, it has to pay double the terrain cost. The bypass uses the open ground of the hex, so the truck will have to spend 8 MP to bypass this house for a total of 13 MP. On the road, we would start the truck for 1 MP. It would only cost a half movement point to go to the next road hex for a total of 1.5 MP. And then, it went to the next road hex for another 0.5 MP for a total of 2 MP. As you can see, a truck can move a long way on the road. That covers how trucks move. Next, we will see how unarmored vehicles are attacked. For this, we go to the stars located on the right side of the counter. If you notice, the stars are where the armor value would normally be. This means the vehicle is unarmored and is thus susceptible to small arms fire. Now, let's assume our Opel Blitz truck is two hexes away from the 447 Russian unit and is a German movement phase. Our truck is carrying a 9-1 liter and a 467 as passengers. The German player announces that the truck is going to start for one. The Russian player now declares first fire at the truck. To see what the Russian player needs to roll, we refer to the star row on the IFT chart. The star column refers to the stars located on the unarmored truck. On top of the column for the four firepower, show uh, the star B is a five. This means that a four firepower attack will mobilize an unarmored truck on a five and destroy it on a four or less. The Russian player rolls a six. The six is higher than the five in the star row, so the truck is not destroyed. Now, however, the passengers have to undergo a normal morale check because of the sixth result on the four firepower column of the IFT. The German player rolls an eight for the leader who passes, but he rolls a nine for the 467, so the 467 breaks. Now remember, with riders, when they broke, they would have to bail out. This is not the case here. The broken squad can stay in the truck with the leader as the truck pulls away. Now, just to continue the example, the truck travels to the next hex and gets shot at again by a 458 who rolls a four. Now the truck is destroyed and the units inside have to roll for crew survival. The CS value for the, this truck is a six. Each of the German units rolls individually. 
Rolling top to bottom, the, ruler, the leader rolls first. He gets a six, survives, and gets placed under the wreck. Now the broker squad rolls and gets a six as well. There, however, there is a plus one DRM to the squad's roll because it is broken at the time that the vehicle was destroyed. This pushes the squad's crew survival number to a seven, which is higher than the six. So the 467 does not survive and is removed from the game. Since the vehicle was destroyed, the remaining, the remaining passengers do not have to go through a morale check like they did when the truck was not destroyed. This finishes our video on truck movement and trucks as targets. I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. Please remember that these videos are meant to be an introduction to this great game, to give you enough confidence to dive in and have some fun. Keep playing and don't worry about making mistakes. Perhaps learn from a more experienced player or go to one of the many tournaments around the country, like the New York State ASL Championships in Albany, New York, and the Larissa in Boxborough, Massachusetts. If you liked this video and our other videos, please like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, feel free to contact me at jdhobbies at live.com. And like always, thanks for watching.